Hey guys, it's Jen. I'm a test prep tutor and today I want to challenge you. I'm going to share five of the most challenging SAT math questions that I have come across. Now some of these questions are hard because they are conceptually difficult and require a higher level of mathematical maturity. Others of these aren't so conceptually advanced, but they may be tricky. So something about the way that these questions are worded, if you're not super careful, you may make a silly mistake and fall for one of the traps that College Board set. I'm going to walk you through these five questions, but before each one, I do want to encourage you to try these for yourself. You can see how far you can get and maybe you can even solve them. I'm going to share my thought process and the reasoning behind how I do these. My solutions may not be the only one out there, but I did try to come up with the most efficient ways of doing these questions to hopefully help you save some time. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for more content like this. All right, guys, let's get into it. All right, so here is our first question. In the polynomial P of X defined above, K is a constant. If P of X is divisible by X, what is the value of K? All right, so on this question, the most important thing we need to understand is this phrase right here, P of X is divisible by X. What does that mean? Well, for a polynomial to be divisible by X, that means X is a factor of that polynomial. If we solve this polynomial equal to zero, what we know is that the number zero is a root or a solution to this polynomial. Okay, so let's do that. If we set an input of zero in place of x, we'll get an output of zero. Okay, so if we put x, if we set zero for all the x variables, that means all of these x terms go away, this one as well. And now let's just simplify a little bit. 3 times 5, 15, minus a negative 5k, so that's going to be plus a 5k, and that's going to equal zero. Now we just solve for k. 15 is negative 5k, that means k is equal to negative 3. So this question really comes down to your understanding of what it means for a polynomial to be divisible by something. Again, that means that something, in this case x, is a factor of that polynomial. All right, here's the next question. This one's a little bit different. This is going to be a probability question. On the left side here, we have a table representing two different age groups, 14 to 15, 16 to 17, and whether they had a summer job. So let's look at this question. Based on the data, how many times more likely is it for a 14-year-old or 15-year-old to not have a summer job than it is for a 16 or 17-year-old to not have a summer job? So I'm first going to translate this, okay? I'm going to write it like this in a fraction. Up top, what we want is the probability of 14, 15 to not have a job, okay? And on the bottom is, again, the probability of 16, 17 to not have a job. So from here, we're actually going to um, solve for each of these. So let's start with the top. What is the probability of a 14 to 15 year old to not have a job? Well, let's look at the data here. 14 to 15, 69 out of 89 of them will not have a job. Oops, okay. 69 out of 89. Then we're going to put that all over 16 and 17. So that's 42 out of 81. That's the probability that the 16, 17 year olds will not have a summer job. So 42 out of 81. And this is what you're calculating, not just 69 over 42, which is the mistake a lot of students tend to make. So if you calculate this, and this is a calculator question, you should get right around 1.5. Next up, we have one of my favorite questions. Alan drives an average of 100 miles each week. Okay, so I'm going to write here to the right 100 miles per week. His car can travel an average of 25 miles per gallon. Okay, 25 miles per gallon. Alan would like to reduce his weekly expenditure by $5. Assuming gasoline costs $4 per gallon, which equation can he use to determine how many fewer average miles um, he should drive each week? Okay, so I want you to take a look at the answer choices here. 
and note that there are two tricks to this question. The first is, on the right side of the equation, should we, ha should we have a 95 or a 5? And to answer that question, we have to know what we're given. The question is how many fewer average miles he should drive each week. That's what you're trying to solve for. And we know we want to reduce the expenditure per week by $5. Reduce per week by $5. What that means is on the other side, we need to look at the savings. We care about the savings and that is five. So we know it can't be A or C. We're down to B and D. Just based on the fact that on the right side, we need to know his savings. Okay, but we're not out of the woods yet because this one is still quite challenging. You have to figure out if it's four over 25 or 25 over four. And now I'm not going to guess. I'm going to show you how to do it because this gets at one of the most important tips, techniques to solving challenging word problems oftentimes. And that is using units. Okay, this is one of the secrets I share with students, the importance of using units to help you get to the right answer. So let's do that. On the right side, we already know it's a five, but five what? Well, five dollars, okay? So then we back into it. M we know is in miles. So I'm gonna write that in. That means whatever I multiply by, it's going to have a unit of dollars per mile. Why? Because in that way, I can cancel all my miles and end up in the unit of dollars, which is what we need. So then we come back to the brain dump I did earlier, and we're gonna actually use this information. Dollars per mile, well, we know it's $4 a gallon, 25 miles a gallon. So that means in, so that means I can spend $4 to travel 25 miles. And now I've canceled out my miles, and I've ended up with exactly dollars. So the answer is D. Again, the importance here is to be able to use units to help you back into your answer so there's no guessing involved. All right, next up, number 19. How many liters of a 25% saline solution must be added to three liters of a 10% saline solution to obtain a 15% saline solution? This is a problem that gives a lot of my students heartburn. They think it's super difficult, but I'm going to show you it's not so bad. So the key to this one is I want you to think about it in terms of part to whole. What does that mean in context? Well, in this case, we care about salt to total solution. Total solution. Okay, I'll shorthand it here. The salt content to the total solution is what you want. So let's actually figure out what the salt is. So in this case, we are asked how many liters, I don't know, X, but that X liters has 25% salt solution. So 0.25 of X, and to that, I'm going to add three liters of a 10%. So it's three times 0.1. And that's the entirety of the salt content. But then, how, what's our total solution? Well, the total solution is made up of X liters, plus three liters. And that salt to total is going to equal the 15% on the other side, so 0.15. Okay, so at this point, it's just straight algebra. I'm going to move my denominator over. I get 0.25x plus 0.3 is equal to 0.15 times parentheses x plus 3. I don't know about you, but I'm not a huge fan of working with decimals here, so I'm just gonna multiply everything by 100 to get rid of my decimal. So I'll get 25x plus 30 is equal to 15x plus 45. Might as well do some distribution while I'm here. Okay, we're gonna combine like terms and just solve. So we get 10x on this side equals 15. What does that mean? That means x is equal to 1.5. Okay, make sure that there's no rounding um, requirements. Nope, so our answer would just be 1.5. All right, last question here, number 23. The equation above models the number of members M of a gym T years after the gym opens. Of the following, which equation models the number of members of gym Q quarter years after the gym opens? So Let's first interpret what's going on here. If we look at this equation, this is a standard exponential equation, but let's actually understand what we're representing. So the M here is the number of members. So what we know here is 
right when the gym opens, we start with 1,800 members. And then each year that goes by, we increase by 2%. Okay, so this is just about converting that T into Q. So let's think about how that works. Well, a Q quarter, so a quarter is one fourth of a year. So after one quarter, we should only be raising our 2% to one fourth. So the answer is A. So what's so tricky about this question, right? This is not a conceptually difficult question, but it's quite tricky. A lot of students pick B and they pick B because they think, oh, one year is equal to four quarters. So therefore for Q. But if you really think about what B represents, let's say after one quarter. Well, if you use B after one quarter, you're raising the 2% to a power of four. So after one year, you're raising that 2% to a 16th power, which fundamentally changes, right? What we're initially starting with. Okay, so this one is A. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments how many of these you were able to do on your own. If you found this helpful, please give the video a like and share it with your friends. Also, while you're here, check out my other content. I have more videos on test taking tips and strategies. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell. Let me know what other videos, content, test taking tips, strategies you would like to see. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you soon. Bye bye.